Hello! In this video, we'll talk about gram staining. Gram staining is a method which was devised by Hans Christian Gram at 1884. So it's a pretty old technique. This particular staining method can discriminate between gram positive bacteria from the gram negative bacteria. Gram positive bacteria has thick mesh like cell wall which stains purple by crystal violet. In contrast, the gram negative bacteria have thinner layer which cannot retain the purple stain of crystal violet and get counter stained by safranin. This might sound a bit alien at this moment, but till the end of this video, this would be super clear. Let me walk you through the step of these staining protocol. So the staining starts with smearing our slide with a patient derived sample or sample from any other places. So with a small swab, you can put your sample on the slide. Then the step, next step is to heat fix the slide by gently moving the slide over a Bunsen burner. Then in the second step, we have to use primary stain. In this case, crystal violet act like a primary stain. So crystal violet gets inserted into the cell wall and thereby it can stain the cell wall of the bacteria. So first we add the crystal violet and incubate about a minute or so. This time and protocol might be variable a little bit but overall the steps remain the same. After this incubation process, the bacteria should stain purple in color if they are gram positive or even they are gram negative. Everybody would stain purple. Now then we add a iodine solution. This iodine acts like a moderator. It allows the crystal violet to be trapped inside the cell wall. So this iodine and crystal violet complex makes it kind of more rigid and fix it inside the cell wall. So the complex is fairly large and it cannot be washed away with water and it's insoluble in water. Now we add a decolorization agent, most commonly ethanol or acetone. So when we wash this particular slide with decolorization reagent, there would be further loss of uh, water from the cell wall. And this cell wall becomes literally impermeable for the iodine and crystal violet compound. So this complex cannot actually uh, be released from the cell wall and it's retained into the cell wall of a gram positive bacteria. It has a fairly thick cell wall. In contrast, in gram negative bacteria, the th cell wall is pretty thin and this particular organism cannot hold the crystal violet iodine complex and the decolorizing agent wash it away. So in the next step, when counter stain happens, then safranin can stain this particular uh, gram negative organism but not the gram positive organism. So the gram positive bacteria would remain violet color whereas the gram negative bacteria will be stained as reddish or kind of like pinkish in this particular stain. So by looking at the color we can clearly discriminate gram positive bacteria from a gram negative bacteria. So this was the overall summary of this particular process. Now, let me tell you the applications of gram staining in the field of medical microbiology. So obviously, it can discriminate between gram positive infections from a gram negative infection. For example, most common gram positive infections are Staphylococcus aureus infection, Streptococcus, etc. Whereas gram negative infections like Salmonella, pneumonia, urinary tract infection, all of these things happen due to gram negative bacteria. This is kind of like very generalistic uh, statement. But what we can understand that from gram staining, that there could be a class of bacteria which are which is which might be pathogenic and for, can be found in patient sample. It might be gram positive or negative. Based on that, a clinician can understand okay which antibiotic to choose for the treatment purpose. 
Now, gram staining is not the confirmatory test for a diagnosis purpose. It is just a screening step. It's a first pass screening which can be done easily without any sophisticated instrumentation and that's the biggest advantage of gram staining now gram staining has several disadvantages as well for example gram staining does not work properly on acid fast organism let me give you a clear example so it won't act on mycobacterium tuberculosis that well so this acid fast bacteria has thick uh, mycolic acid in their cell wall and that, that doesn't allow the gram stain to penetrate so even it has to be stained with a different kind of uh, staining method such as acid fast staining if you want to learn more about acid fast staining you can click on the i button right now now gram staining is pretty much applicable for those bacteria which has cell wall i mean most bacteria does have cell wall but bacteria like mycoplasma who don't have any cell wall they would not be stained with gram staining right there must be some other kind of methodology to detect these kind of mycoplasma in laboratory so if you want to learn more about mycoplasma and mycoplasma infection you can click on the i button but despite of all these disadvantages gram staining is easy to perform cost effective and that's why it is frequently used in medical microbiology lab so I hope this video was useful. You can get a note regarding this topic in my Facebook page for which the link is given in the description box. And as usual, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. You can support me on Patreon. If you are an Indian viewer, you can uh, actually uh, use this QR code to support my channel. Your small support means a lot. My courses are also present in Unacademy, which is India's uh, online learning platform. You can use my code AP10 to get a 10% discount and I'm present in all the social media so you can follow me on social media, get in touch with me. I would be really happy to answer your questions. Thank you.